For the best liberty-oriented talk 24-7, visit lrn.fm. The number of violent acts committed by people who sound like liberty lovers, well, it's a pretty small list in the U.S., uh, unless you start counting people who are working for the government. But the bad actors on this list, or I guess maybe in some cases really were, literally bad actors, well, they've left a historical precedent that we could look to and get a sense for what the public reaction would be if freedom folk were perceived to have perceived to be a part of a guerrilla war against one or more governments inside the U.S. Assuming that such a government were at least perceived as being native, native-born, I think we all have a sense for how the effect would not be very good. Off the top of my head, the anti-federal acts of violence committed over the last 20 years would include, of course, the Waco incident where they shot all those ATF agents and then burned to a crisp, the Oklahoma City bombing, the Stack incident where that man flew a fuel-laden small plane into an IRS office, killed one person, IRS worker, the 9-11 truth who shot up some military guards. I guess I'm sort of leaving out incidents of non- deadly violence. But public reaction to these sorts of things, the, the more targeted incidents, uh, you know, which aren't as evil, tend to not even get, no one even knows they happened. And then the ones that are infamous, as many people have heard of, are the ones where a lot of civilians get killed. If there were a violent rebellion on a larger scale, presumably by freedom folk, probably small factions of the freedom movement initially, or individuals, and this would be the kind of occasion where you'd, you you wouldn't be powerless if you were a freedom lover. You'd be more powerful than usual in the sense that it's, it's your time, your chance to step up to the plate and actually shut down a war yourself. There's not enough free speech left in America for me to articulate any kind of specific scenario. You never know these days when the authorities are going to take one of your ideas, blame it on you, and execute it. But let's say there were another event vaguely comparable to the Oklahoma City bombing, where a lot of uh, kids and or civilians were harmed by someone making liberty-sounding noises, in which, no matter, no matter what you think about Tim McVeigh, if you listen to his yapping, he made it sound as though he were making libertarian noises. Supposedly he was connected with militias, although that was a pretty tenuous connection in real life from what I understand. Well, anyway, the militias got the finger pointed at them after that happened. But what would have happened if, instead of reacting defensively, a few of the militia folk had protested that bombing by descending on the nearest federal building, not as opponents so much as human shields? We all have to admit, maybe we are opponents, even enemies, of the federal government, or many of the things it does. But we're all supposed to be united in the idea that there should be no indiscriminate warfare waged against its buildings. Most of us are also against the discriminate type of warfare. So directed. Anyhow, uh, this is one of those areas where, you know, I have a lot of ideas that I can't actually implement, but that's the one that's kind of at the back of my mind, is the, the one that I would maybe do if there were a, a troubling uptick in anti-federal violence of some kind. Remember, American Christians were at their best when they went to the mosques after 9-11 to help protect people who were just worshiping there, protect them from retaliation. In the same way, American freedom lovers would tend to be at their best when they're protecting the physical safety of their ostensible enemies. There'd be a pretty severe limit on what any of them could do, but each could do something. And I intend to do something, if needed. If nothing else, it might send a constructive message. LRN.FM, 24 hours of Liberty Radio every day. Now available on satellite, too, at sat.com dot lrn dot fm <laughs>
That's what a satellite sounds like. Put it on your unlicensed station. Wear it in your hair. But above all, don't despair. The Liberty message is getting out. And right now, you're missing it. Or maybe you're not. But skip on over to LRN.FM. Feds don't want you to hear them.